So, those of you that are able, if you would stand to the second Chronicles 7.14. My people who are all in my name, humble themselves, pray and seek my grace. Set aside our, our thoughts away from God, whatever it may be, whether it's the keys you locked in your car prior to coming into church or the recipe that's waiting at home. Um, let's just bring it all to God. He's our strength. He's our buckler. He's our redeemer. And he restores our soul. So if you would, go with me in prayer. Dear Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for allowing each and every person to be here. Lord, we, we ask that you just be with this service and allow your spirit to just flow from breast to breast, allow uh, the, the pastor's words just to, to reach, reach us. And if anyone here doesn't know you, Lord, whether they're here or at a service down the road, Lord, we pray for them also. And Lord, those that just need that revival, we, we pray for that. We just ask that you would just revive us and carry us on. Lord, we ask that you would be with uh, your chosen people, Israel. Please be with them. We pray for peace there. Lord, we thank you that we are now joint heirs of Christ and that we are in the body with your chosen people. Lord, we pray for Ukraine. We pray for just the, the conflicts and the wars and the rumors of wars that you say must and will happen. And Lord, we, we just ask that you be with all the prayer requests that are offered up. Lord, whether they're unspoken, whether they're in our prayer chain, or just you know each and every need and you can meet us there. In Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. I missed last week, so forgive me. Uh, uh, I'm going to ask a question. Is Jana, did Esther feed them babies? Yes, A couple of announcements before we get started today, a little extra on there. Um, I was talking with uh, Damien, and the nursing home contacted him, and we can start up the nursing home ministries again, which is a prayer. Amen? Amen. Y'all can clap for that. We're going to bring Jesus in the light of his hope to all folks. So if you're interested in being part of that, they have protocols because of the COVID thing. See Damien or give him a call and he'll pay everything that's necessary to do that. He's looking for some help to start that up while he is at work on Sundays. Um, if you don't have Damien's number, you can text me and I will put you in touch with him, okay? As you can see to my left, those bright colored looking little things, or the Easter eggs, it's Easter egg season. So you can start filling and uh, your Easter eggs and bringing them in. We'll start storing them for our Easter egg hunt on Easter. We just need them filled and taped, if you will, to keep them from popping open. And uh, if you start thinking about Easter and you see some candy you want to donate, 
please feel free to go ahead and do that and bring them in. There is a prayer team meeting on the 27th at 4.30. Now, prayer team meeting is for those that uh, went through the prayer training in January. If you're interested in being part of leading this church as we go forward and be watchmen on the tower, as scripture tells us, uh, be there on the 27th. I've got some materials for you and some ideas of what the responsibilities of being this prayer team is. If you did not get that training in January, you can still come. If God's leading you to be part of the prayer team, we'll hook you up with the training that you need. It is a very vital ministry. And it is one that cannot be ignored. One of the issues is uh, churches today think of prayer as an appendage, an arm or a leg. And if you lose one, you can still go forth and do what you need to do. It's a convenience, but it's not necessary to have. And prayer is a vital organ. Without it, there is no heartbeat. There is no life of your church. And so we need to take care of it, and we need to make sure it takes number one priority. So that's the 27th at 4.30. Uh, let's see. Uh, mark this on your calendars. June 3rd through the 5th will be our kids VBS slash celebration block party here at the church. 3rd, 4th, and 5th. We're going to need workers. We're going to need helpers. And those that want to donate funds to it, you can do that as well. I know we have some fundraisers coming up as, as well. They're, they're going to sell subs and candy bars so that they can move forward on this. So mark that on your calendars. It's June 3rd through the 5th. And then in May, May 7th, I believe, we have the, I like to call it the Pass the Blessing campaign. Uh, I like that, so I will continue to call it even if I get overruled. The Pass the Blessing campaign. Brother Mike, would you like to come up and say something about that real quick before we get started? Absolutely. More shine light. Yes, uh, May 7th is our, going to be our day. Um, Again, I ask you, invite you, as I did last uh, Sunday, to start collecting your stuff in. To help you along, we brought some boxes in today for you to start your uh, collection as you purge your uh, springtime things or items for this. And uh, they can be gathered up in the back hallway as you leave this morning. There should be a stack of them back there. Uh, and I'm going to ask you this morning, as you start this, uh, I was sort of, I, I thought about the, the importance of this event that we're going to do. Um, each item is not just an item, it's sort of a fingerprint of God that you're going to reach out to this community. And it's a really important. Uh, you're going to reach needs for people that you, you may not need, meet or know. And so I ask you that as you're gathering these items up, put them in there, just pray over the box. That God would reach on me uh, with this, whatever it is. It's, it's met needs, it really is. And so uh, right now, we're planning on getting a spot here in the church to put those items. Uh, we're not quite ready for that yet. So if you could, as you box them up, just box them up, tape them up, write pass the blessing on the box. So when they do come in here, we know what they are. And then uh, we'll, we'll as, a, as we get a little bit closer to the date, we'll have a place for the, to store those items. But it's going to be an, an awesome item. And, and by the way, it's on calendar. Uh, I hope you guys drop by even for a few minutes if you can, if you can afford it. It's going to be an awesome event. You'll be able to, to, to talk and pray and and uh, reach with people and, and converse with people and, uh, and meet them where they're at. So, hey, Pastor. It is an awesome min uh, ministry. We get to physically show Jesus' love to folks. So when you're looking at these items, inspect them, make sure they work. Yes. Yes. Clean them up, make sure they're in good shape because these are the blessings that we're given. These represent Christ and His glory. So, uh, well, as long as, as we do this in the parking lot, we're also going to feed them hot dogs and chips, and we're going to have a prayer booth, and we're going to minister to folks. That's what it's all about. So mark that on your calendar. Make sure that you participate. So with that said, good morning. Good morning. What do you get when you boil a funny bun? You get a laughing stop. <laughs> That's humorous. Get that? See what I did there? 
And one more since I missed last week. What did one eye say to the other? Something between us smells. <laughs> it's an exciting time to serve God, isn't it? Yes. Woke up this morning, I saw that the clouds were going away, and the sun, you know, we had that rain the other day, and I, man, it's looks gorgeous to open the door, and that cold wind reminded me, not so much yet. <laughs> but what a beautiful day it is to gather to serve Christ. Today, the sermon, the title is called Understanding Truth. If you have your bulletin, inside your bulletin, you will see the, the order selection of service on the right, left, and on the right, you will see the sermon references that we're going to use. They're in order as we use them. On the back, there is a spot for you to take notes. We made this as visitor-friendly as possible. We're hoping that you take those notes, use those references, use them as a Bible study this week on this subject, and let us know what God tells you about it as well. We finished the Fruit of the Spirit series a couple of weeks ago. And now we continue talking about your new you walk. That's what we're focusing on this year. How you can be the best new you as a disciple of Christ that you can be. And to do that, we will continue to focus on the Holy Spirit. Because he is key when it comes to your new you walk. Now... To use anything in the most efficient manner possible, you need to know how it works. A good grasp is possible through knowledge. Now that makes sense, right? I mean, that's a common sense statement. The more you know about something, the better you are at operating. We fail a lot when it comes to that. Guys, we get a new box, a new electronic, a new toy, we, we tear it open and we start playing with it before we even read the instructions. Matter of fact, we play with it so much, but when we finally get stumped on something, we'll get the instruction booklet, but we'll only look at what stumped us. Do we hardly ever read the entire instruction manual? That's what happens when it comes to God's truth. When we become a disciple in Christ, we stumble through life more times than not because we don't have a good working knowledge of who Jesus is and what he expects from us. And when we do get stumped, we go to the instruction manual, God's word, but we only look up that spot that's got us stumped. Nor do we take time every day to learn a little bit more about Jesus Christ. And you don't have to say amen or shake your head. I know it's true for a lot of us. But we should have daily reading and daily knowledge of Jesus Christ. But that's what happens. We must have the Holy Spirit in us. And we must learn to seek and obey His teachings. To know spiritual truth. And truly, knowledge is power. Spiritual warfare begins the moment you don't expect it to. And you really got to be strong in your faith. John 6, 63 says, The Spirit is the one who gives life. The flesh doesn't help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and are life. This is a great verse. You should circle this verse. You should keep this verse in mind because every time a disciple goes down life's road and there's a decision to be made on which way, which path to take, the old nature just jumps out of us and we just make decisions without even seeking or obeying the Holy Spirit. We don't think anything about it. But this verse says, the Spirit is the one that gives us life. This verse says that the flesh can't help you at all with these decisions. But yet we seem to follow that old self-knowledge. Grasping God's truth so that we can understand it cannot be accomplished through our knowledge. It must be revealed by the Holy Spirit. You cannot understand or comprehend God's logic using the old human logic that the old nature has. It's just not possible. Because the old nature takes you down one path, and God's truth and God's nature and your new nature takes you down a different path. And the 
book of John, it says you can't serve two masters. You've got to make a choice. And the Holy Spirit is in us to help us with that choice. So why is that important? Well, let me give you a good example. The Jews thought the study of Scripture and doing the works of the law was enough to gain spiritual understanding. But it wasn't. They missed the Messiah. They know the Pentateuch. They know the Torah, the first five books of the law. They follow it and do their best to stay within those guidelines. But you know what? It wasn't enough. They missed Jesus Christ. John 14, verses 16 and 17 says, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. He is the Spirit of truth. The world is unable to receive him because it doesn't see him or know him. But you do. You know him because he remains with you and will be in you. We know him because he's in us. The world doesn't know him because the world never experienced him. Alright, so if you've tuned me out already because of the beautiful day, tune me back in. Because this is the important part. Amen. <laughs> it's about a connection. We're going to talk about a connection to be successful in your new you walk. Sometimes to rely, or to really know something, you must experience it. The world, or the people in it, that doesn't know the Holy Spirit has never experienced that relationship with God. They've never experienced that power that is given to you. And they've never experienced the truth that the Holy Spirit gives us. So they turn away from God. Those folks that have never experienced those things have a hole in their heart. And that hole, they try to fill it with self and pleasures of sin and things that they think that might make them feel better but it never fills that holds there until Jesus Christ fills it to make us complete as a believer we have experienced that relationship with God we have experienced that power we have experienced that truth that freeing from sin now let's talk about the connection this is important. The connection is this. When you accept Jesus Christ as a personal Savior, you may have never read Scripture in your life. You may have never picked up a Bible. But when you bend your knee to Jesus Christ, you know He exists. You know it because you feel it. You know it because you've experienced it. You know that He is your God and that He is alive. And that gives us a hunger to read Scripture. And that Scripture is then translated for us by the Holy Spirit so we can have a knowledge, a working knowledge of the relationship that we have to help guide us. You with me so far? The short circuit of the connection of the two is where disciples run into trouble. And I don't want you to run into this trouble. There is the head knowledge of knowing what God's Word says because it has been explained to you. And then there is the heart knowledge of the experience of it, the feelings, the emotions of it. Some years ago, 19 years ago or so, a fellow got saved, and he just devoured the Word. I mean, he made me jealous, the way he devoured that Word. And he'd call me, and we'd spend hours talking about God's Word and the meaning. We'd talk about the history of the words, and, and he was a wonderful disciple, and he had the knowledge. So I asked him one day, I said, on Wednesday nights, will you lead a Bible study before prayer service? He said, Pastor, I'd love to do that. As soon as you get the attendance up to about 20 people, I'll do that for you. See, so he had every bit of the equipment he needed here. But he lacked the connection to the heart. The connection to the heart says one is worth it. One is worth it. Because God loves that one as much as he loves us. He lost that connection. Now he loved the word and he wanted to impress upon people the word. And he would try to encourage them or challenge them to read the word. But he would do it in a way that they wouldn't accept it. They would figure it's almost like a bullying thing. They wouldn't do it because.
because he lacked the connection between the experience. If you want to lead people to read more of the Word, you've got to connect to the people, and the connection comes through the heart, the desire. Now, I've known disciples who come in, and they're all upset with their walk because they have it here, just absolutely have the emotions and the experience, so much so that they never question the people that are taking advantage of them. They just give and give and give, and people realize this, and they take and take and take, and they're taking advantage of them. They're not connected to what God's knowledge here says. God's knowledge here says we don't cast our pearls before swine. Jesus told them as they followed him after feeding them on the, on the mount, the 5,000, he turned around and says, you're only following me because I fed your bellies. There was no loyalty to this. To be the best that you can be, you've got to have the connection. This has to work with this. This has to do its part, and this has to do its part. Without it, you're only half as good as you can be for Jesus Christ. Without the connection, you, you are great, but you're only half as great as God wants you to be. The Holy Spirit gives us the example so that we must use it correctly to strengthen our walls. We need to build that connection. What does that mean? We must blend the two together. You must read the instructions. You must read God's word. You must seek and obey what the Holy Spirit's telling you in your heart. Do the head knowledge and do the heart knowledge. And you need to put them together for the experience of being the best disciple of Jesus Christ you can be. You have to understand that you serve a mighty God. And that mighty God wants you to know who He is so that you can have a relationship with Him. He wants you to know who He is and dive into His wisdom so you can walk the path that you need to walk to show the reflect the glory of Jesus to all those people that He loves that don't know Him. You have to do that by connecting the two. John 16, 13 says, When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but he will speak whatever he hears. He will also declare to you what is to come. Another wonderful verse. It says the Holy Spirit don't do anything on his own. He, he talks to the rest of the Trinity, the Father and the Son. That's the information that we get. Now, some of you might have caught this verse, some of you might know this verse, and some of you might not, but those that don't, here's the surprise to you. It says that he's going to give you insight to future events. Now, as a person walking this life, I would like a little forewarning, the knowledge of what's to come. Would you? That'd excite me. It says it does that. Think of it. God in you, looking out for you, by giving you the ability to understand His truth and declaring to you future events, warnings. In Luke twenty-two thirty-one, 31, Jesus tells Peter, He said, Hey, Peter, I just heard Satan's looking to sift you. He's looking to test you. He's looking to see how strong your faith is. It's coming. Now, I don't know about you, but the Holy Spirit gives me a warning like that. I'm going to be bulking up on God's Word. I'm going to be relying on His wisdom, and I'm going to be connecting this with this so that I can make the right choices that I need to make. How about you, amen? Amen. There are times, as a pastor, as I meditate and I pray, that I get this sense from the Holy Spirit, something's coming. It's the other sheep. And I'll seek God's wisdom for it. And he'll tell me, you need to pray for the members and their safety. Spiritual warfare is coming. And I'll call a few folks and I'll say, you need to start praying for church members. I don't know what's coming, but I can feel it. The storm's brew. God does that for all of us. All those that are disciples of Jesus Christ get the same advantages. 
For example, let's say you're a believer, you're walking the walk, and a guy comes in from town, he says, Hey, man, I ain't seen you for a while. I said, we got a big party going on next week at this place. We'd love to have you. We catch up on things. Well, this fellow's not a believer. He's got a big party coming up. You say, yeah, I'd love to spend some time with you. I'll be there. Not asking the Holy Spirit, not following God's wisdom on what he wants you to do. And all week, you're going, you know what? I got this voice in the back of my head said, eh, it's probably not the best thing that you should do. Yeah, you probably shouldn't do that. And you, you, God's throwing people in your way saying, nah, eh, dude, I don't know. I'd think twice before I did that. And most times, rather than not, we'll quench that Holy Spirit and we'll go do it. And it's a bad choice to make. Connection between this and this is what you need to be the best you, you can be. Because once God warns you and you get into the scriptures, you know what you should do and shouldn't do. It's not a surprise. You may call it a surprise, but it's only a surprise because you choose not to listen to your master. You choose to circumvent everything that God has put in you to be the best of you that you can be so you can do what your old nature wants you to do. You do not belong to this world anymore. You are an ambassador now to show God's light and His glory to those who don't know Him. And you need to make sure that you act that way. You need to make sure that you talk that way. You need to make sure that you've got this and this together to beat the spiritual warfare and the temptations. You need to listen, seek, and obey the Holy Spirit. Train yourself to understand that God lives within you and you are His vessel. And you belong to Him. And He's got work for you to do. And you need to do that work. It's why we're here. Because the payment was your soul. He saved you from an eternity of hell. He died on that cross for your sins. And because of that, we no longer under sin's rule. We are saved by grace. Amen? Amen. And we need to act as soldiers for Jesus Christ. Isaiah recounts how God led his people into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit in Isaiah 63, 14. You remember that? Fire by night, cloud by morning. And Isaiah predicted God's renewed guidance in the future in Isaiah 43, 19. God is with us to guide us. Here's the thing that you need to understand. Wrap your mind around it. We're going to get into it with a few verses from Paul as we reflect on who he is. But wrap around your mind to this. God is going to provide everything that you need. He's Jehovah Jireh, our provider. You don't have to look outside God's will to get what you need. You look outside God's will to get what you want. But if you stay with inside God's will, He will provide everything that you need. To the Israelites, He gave them a GPS to get them where they need to go. To the Israelites, He provided them security as He wiped out Egypt's army. And when they're hungry, God provided them manna. As long as they followed God's rules, He fed them every night. And when they're thirsty, they got water from rocks. God gave them everything that they need. There was nothing they needed from outside of God's will. They were content, or they should have been content, with what God has given them. And that goes for us. If you're a child of God, you should be content with what God has given you. You should be thanking Him for what He's given you. I don't go to bed hungry. I thank God for that. I wake up the next morning, God protected me through the night. I owe God everything, and I should act like I owe God everything. Amen. So the question is, when will we stop saying can't when it comes to God's service? I've said this from the pulpit a dozen times, and you all probably know what I'm about to say. And the moment you say, well, I can't do that, stop right there and replace can't with well. won't. Because that fits better. You can do anything if God's telling you to do it. You just won't do it. When are we 
are going to say it's just too hard to do? When are we going to stop saying that? We can't do that. Take a look at the physical numbers. Take a look at the physical people. Take a look at the physical things. What's that got to do with the power of God? <clears throat> Why are we making decisions through the old nature about what we see instead of making decisions about what God sees? We walk on faith because God provides for us. Stop looking at the numbers and start looking at the Father. When will we replace those words with spiritual truth? Thanking the Holy Spirit and saying, I can do it because God says I can. I can do it because God wants me to do it. I can do it because He loves those people that don't know Him. And I am the one that's going to be reflecting His glory. I'm going to be reflecting His glory in May in that parking lot. I'm going to be reflecting His glory in June to those children who need to know Jesus Christ. I'm going to stand for God and do what He wants me to do because that's why I'm called here. It's about service. And we get that through the connection of hearing you. Let me read you these two verses and I'll be done unless God tells me I'm not. Philippians chapter 4 verses 11 through 13 says, I don't say this out of need. This is Paul talking about. I have learned to be content whatever circumstances I'm in. And let me tell you, that is a mouthful in a statement. Because Paul had a lot of circumstances that would be very tough to be contented in if he wasn't following Jesus Christ. If he wasn't expecting him to provide for your needs. He was in jail. He was beaten. He was shipwrecked twice. He was left for dead stone. He finally lost his life. But he's learned to be content in wherever God puts him. And because of that, God used him a lot. I know both how to have a little. And I know how to have a lot. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being content. Here's the secret. Whether well-fed or hungry. Whether in abundance or in need. You ready? The secret. Shh. I am able to do all things through him who strengthens. Paul saying it's out of my control. It's all in God's control. If I have a little, then I'll thank God for that little. If I have a lot, then I'll thank God for that lot. But one way or the other, I'm going to reflect who Jesus Christ is. Amen. And I am exactly where I need to be because God put me there. Whatever trial and tribulation you're going through, God has put you there. Or it is a test for you to reflect who He is. To show by faith the mannerisms of Jesus Christ no matter what comes. We are living in shaky times to a lot of people because they don't know Jesus Christ. And a lot of people are running a little scared. And a lot of people are trying to read Revelation because somebody told them about that when he was a kid. And a lot of people have called my number for this church and asking me a lot of questions about what's going on in the world events. But I'm here to tell you, here's how I answer it. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what's going on in this world. Doesn't matter. God is in control. And if you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, He's going to provide for your needs and He's going to protect you. And the moment He calls you home, you wouldn't want to come back anyway. Now, if you're on this phone and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, that's where you need to know who my Lord is. Amen. Amen. You don't want to get up in the morning shaking as you're drinking your coffee because you're looking at the world events. Then know the Master. Know the power. Have a relationship. And that's how I answer that question. Contentment. And the best new you walk that you possibly can have lies into the connection. God's word and God's love. 
we need to make sure we put that connection together. We need to seek and we need to obey the Master that lives in us. That's where you will have success. Bow your heads with me if you will. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior or you're watching us by video, this is where the Holy Spirit is working on you. But the Holy Spirit's showing you or telling you that you need Him. Then this is where your faith begins. All you have to do is say this prayer. You don't have to say it out loud, but you do have to mean it. Lord, forgive me of my sins. I'm lost. And I need you in my life. Come into my life and replace my will with yours. And I will follow you for an eternity. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. With every head still bowed and every eye still closed. If you said that prayer through the video ministry, welcome to the family of God. We invite you to come to Shine Light Baptist Church. The address is on the screen. And tell us about that decision that you made. So that we can help start your path as a disciple. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you said that prayer today and you have a home church or a family church that you're comfortable with, then we encourage you to go to that pastor. Tell them about the decision that you made so that they can start you on your path as a disciple of Jesus Christ. If you're here today and you said that prayer, if you're here today and you finally feel that empty void that's been in your life, all I want you to do when nobody's looking around is just raise your head and look up at me. Did you say that prayer today? Amen. Is there another? Did you say that prayer today? Just, no? Yes? Okay. All right. That's fine. Is there another that said that prayer? All right. Look up at me again. So I'm going to ask you three questions. Did you say that prayer today in me? Are you ashamed of what Jesus did for you? In a minute, we're going to give the invitation. We want to celebrate with you. We want to give you a little bit of counseling of what the decision that you made today. Are you willing to come down and do that? I promise you we won't eat you. And that you will leave here happier than when you came. Amen? Okay. All right. Praise God for that. If you're here today and you're a believer in Jesus Christ and your walk is not exactly where it needs to be. If your walk has suffered because we have not made that connection of who we are through the head and through the heart. I want to pray for you. Nobody's looking around. Just slip up your hand now so I can put a face to my prayers. Amen. Amen. I will be praying for you this week. All right, you may stand. With us, if you will, as we give the invitation, I need one female counselor, please.